Hey guys, welcome back. Here's a, another look at that Philco 41280. Uh, it's a uh, code 121, 115 volt AC, 60 watt, uh, resides in the uh, riders, uh, 1261, 63, 73, and maybe one other page as well. It's an 8 tube radio, 8 push buttons, 4 knobs, and uh, you can see it's got the beautiful lower vertical grills. And a big 12-inch uh, uh, speaker with a uh, push-pull circuit uh, using two Type 41 tubes. So this thing should uh, really uh, uh, punch some sound once we get it the uh, restoration complete. Here's a little closer look at that uh, beautiful dial plate. Again, two short wave bands in addition to the broadcast band. Again, a close look here at those uh, eight knobs. Uh, we'll clean those up or reproduce them. You can see the four shafts there for the potentiometers leaving the chassis. And again, this radio's uh, obviously has been in a barn or something, and uh, some mice have uh, been in here. Uh, the old tuning condenser is uh, seized up, and there's a lot of rust there on the top side of the chassis that uh, we'll have to uh, take care of as well. Uh, shouldn't be a problem. It's just uh, time consuming and a little extra uh, elbow grease uh, just to get everything uh, back in shape. Some additional photos here of what lies ahead. Again, just uh, a lot of rust removal, as I mentioned, and that uh, tuning condenser. Hopefully that thing is not uh, completely seized up or rusted up. But uh, we'll pull it out, probably soak it in evaporust like you guys have seen me do many times before for maybe three, four days or longer if needed. And then uh, we'll look at uh, putting a rust inhibitor on just to prevent that from coming back. Here in this video, we'll start uh, taking a look at the power transformer and do a quick evaluation of the uh, power transformer itself. Some additional tests will be done once we remove it from the chassis, but... Um, We'll do a quick look here at the health of that um, AC power transformer. And again, just a close-up here, some of the buildup on the chassis that will have to be uh, removed at some point. One thing I always do is just take a uh, hand drawing and pull the tubes out one by one, and I'll compare that to the schematic. In this case, I think I've got at least one mismatched tube and it may be a substitute. Uh, we'll look at it. Two of the tubes were not marked. I've got those labeled right now just using some painter's tape. Here you can see I'm just removing or cutting that old AC cord just for newbies out there working in the uh, hobby. Never fire one of these up. Again, uh, you can see here the wires are frayed. It would be a, a safety issue uh, first and foremost. Just a quick visual, you'll see the Philco blocks here, and inside those uh, encased blocks, uh, typically like a tar waxy substance with the uh, capacitors stuffed in. I've even uh, found resistors in there as well. We'll be restuffing this with the uh, modern day safety caps. So uh, let's spend just a moment here and talk about the uh, safety caps and the purpose. Okay, when we start the electrical restoration, I'll actually replace those capacitors inside that Philco block with uh, Type Y safety caps. And I'm showing them here uh, on the schematic itself so you guys can follow along. You can see what's underneath the chassis as well as what I'm showing. Again, they're referred to as line to ground or line to bypass. And again, they just provide a better power line noise reduction. And also from a safety standpoint, if the old capacitor should short out, you can see it takes the, uh, the high side of the voltage, depending on which way the polarity of the plug was, and you could end up with a, uh, you know, a shock hazard or a safety issue where the chassis itself becomes hot. Unlike the uh, modern day safety caps that are rated, if they fail, they actually open. So again, we'll see two benefits from this. It'll be a safety factor as well as reducing that noise that comes in on that AC line side. Now again, to kind of prove the old capacitors are probably not any good, here I'm just checking across the capacitors to ground individually. And you can see I'm reading about 7.8 uh, meg and 8.26 meg across those caps to ground that are there today. Okay, back to uh, basic testing of that uh, power transformer here. I'm just looking at the uh, DC resistance of the uh, input primary. 
you can see I'm reading just under 10 ohms, so uh, that's uh, really in a good spot, and that's where I would expect to, uh, to see that. And in addition, it's close to the original schematic as well. The majority of the time, I always find myself making my measurements underneath the chassis, but you may find it necessary at times or just handy to do the top side. Here I have some tube socket adapters. I think these are still reasonably priced. I purchased this set many years back. I don't find myself using them often, but they do come in handy. Here you can see that I'm using the 5-pin adapter. And again, I've got it plugged in to the rectifier slot, which is the Type 84 6Z4 rectifier. Here I'm reading my 0.2 ohms. That's for the, uh, the heater winding itself. It's referenced here, cross pins number 1 and 5. And uh, comes in handy. Again, at times I could make this exact measurement from underneath. And then again, I'll be moving over to the uh, plate side and doing the same thing where I can read across that secondary winding, and I'll read the complete secondary winding as well as the center tap to each side, and just document those results and compare the measured results against the uh, schematic itself. So one thing I did notice right away, that the uh, measured results seem to be higher than what's documented on the schematic, but the, uh, the results look to be good. So um, I don't have any concerns with what I've measured. Again, this is just a very, very basic test. I'm going to need to pull this transformer out anyway because the bell housing is just all rusted up and there's a lot of rust and crud along the uh, chassis itself at that point. So we'll do more detailed testing later. Just wanted to show the basic testing uh, just to... Um, kind of prove that the uh, power transformer is probably in okay shape. One thing that still looks really odd to me, I think this is the uh, antenna coil. Again, that's just a quick look at the uh, schematic, but uh, you can see it appears it's been uh, desoldered at some point or some work around there. So uh, time will tell. We'll go there next and uh, just make some DC resistance measurements and uh, see if that is in good health or not. So again, folks, hey, thanks for uh, joining me. Just this quick video, kind of an update here on the uh, Philco 41280.